Today we're going to go over some Yasudamo paper products. I have five here to review with you. And uh, they sent these over to me. Uh, there's five types. Thank you, Yasudama, for doing that. I was super excited. And check out my um, previous video with some other supplies that they sent out. You can take a look at this catalog that I'm holding here online on their website. You can download it in PDF format. Um, there's a lot of um, products in here and it's uh, nicely organized um, if you prefer to look at it in this format rather than on their website too. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with this multimedia pad. Uh, this is waterproof, tear resistant, foldable, and um, they made this for sketching, painting, mono printing, stenciling, rubber stamping, cartooning, and finger painting. Um, right, and right here you can use it with a watercolor. Basically anything that you want. Uh, it's mineral paper made from calcium carbonate and it's a vellum surface and acid free. This is a six by eight size. There's 20 sheets in here uh, that are 150 GSM. Okay. And this is what it looks like. It's uh, flexible, almost uh, like very thin um, plastic maybe, but not quite. Uh, has a silicone feel to it, very smooth and soft. It's a little bit transparent. As you can see there, um, I, I love how this feels. It's very sturdy and let's do some experiments with it. Let's fold it here so you can see. It folds nice and tightly on there and let's try to rip it whoa can you see that so you can't rip it that's super cool Yeah, I mean, I see you can do artwork with this. Wow, <laughs> that was pretty cool how it ripped like that. So it didn't do it in the beginning, but then it ripped. That's pretty cool. Oh, it probably has maybe a technique. So when you pull it, like if you were to pull a... Um, a leaf maybe uh, pull a leaf apart and that's how it pulls let's try that again yeah so it snaps um, but you can um, do a lot with this too and if you want to check out what kind of artwork I'm gonna make uh, yes I'm gonna make artwork with even with these um, Keep a lookout for my next video. And you can mold it any way you want. Um, I'm wondering how this would react if I were to soak it in water. That would be cool to find out.
but we're we're also going to test these out with um, the paints, different kind of paints too. Now we're just um, analyzing the paper, taking a look at it, playing with it. And that's pretty awesome. So just by me playing around with this paper like this, you should have an idea of how you can use it. And maybe you even got some new ideas of what you can do for your next project. Um, this is a very sturdy mineral paper that you can take a look at. So let me see if I can find some more information on this um, in here. So mineral paper is made from 80% calcium carbonate, which provides a unique surface for water-based or dry media, a great alternative to wood-based paper. Uh, tear resistant, foldable, non wrinkling. Now, I, I gave it a lot of force there too. Acid free, bright white, vellum surface. It's, it's actually not recommended for oil based paints or oil pastels. Keep that in mind. And it comes in three different sizes. Uh, this is the one that we have, a 6 by 8 and it comes 9 by 12 and 11 by 14 format. Those are nice size options. So now let's go ahead and um, compare this mineral paper with the Legion Upo paper, heavy, translucent, and the medium. So let's go ahead and look at the translucent one right here. This is much thicker than this paper. And keep in mind, these are both made of uh, different uh, products. This is mineral paper. The medium, the medium one is thicker than the translucent one. And you can see the transparency there too. This one is the heavy one. So if you're looking for a thicker paper, uh, this is not mineral paper, the Yupo, uh, the Yusutomo one is mineral paper. Uh, it's uh, thinner than the Legion paper is. These feel more cardboard like, and this is more smooth. It's more, feels more like silicone. Um, very soft and these are a little bit different. And yeah, so these are more like a uh, plastic. So they're definitely different. I'm going to show you in different angles here so you can see the transparency and comparison here. But yeah, so if you already have the Legion uh, paper, you will, um, it's, this is different, definitely different than those. Um, it's, it's a definitely different experience. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. They're just different. So it's nice to have um, all of them if you need to use them, you know, for, for different purposes. 
but this is um, this is very nice. So let's uh, take a look at and move along to the next paper here and um, keep a lookout for the next video. I'm going to be using all these little pieces here and we're going to test out uh, some of their paints too. Next is Shikishi Hosho, which means rice paper. And Japanese rice paper is made with long fibers from the mulberry bush, making them very strong, which allows them to hold up to a variety of art processes. It's high quality Hosho papers trimmed on all si sides to look like traditional shikishi boards. Hosho is highly refined kozo rice paper that is known for its thickness, strength, and fluffiness. Printmakers prefer its absorbency, strength, and versatility. Painters like, like it for ink and water color and lettering. There's 12 sheets in this. It's a uh, nine and a half by 10 and three fourths. This feels very smooth. And then the other side is more coarse. It has texture, it's rough, it feels like raw paper, and this side is more smooth. Very nice, very nice paper. You can use this on both sides to get different texture. And depending on you know, what kind of media you're using it with. And this is probably when they say fluffiness, that's what they're talking about. Probably in this side here, the raw side with the texture. It is, um, I would say fluffy is a good word to use. Um, because it's light, uh, light, and the way the paper is packed when it was made. And this side, it, and it also says thickness and strength, this, this side would be the strength side and the texture that holds it together. And when you rip it and if you're someone like me who loves texture um, this is uh, very nice to have different texture like that and I'll show you this ribbed side too And it rips like almost like a fabric or is in there that they're talking about. It's very um, textured when you rip through it. You can do a lot with this paper. You can use both sides, two for your artwork, the rough side and the smooth side. It just flows. It flows because of the same consistency of the rib. And when we try paint on this, we're gonna try it on both sides to see uh, what it's gonna look like. She, Kishi paper pad, pad of 12 sheets of high quality Hosho paper, a different, a, a little bit different size it looks like than mine. And it 
it's uh, 97 GSM. Although it, do, it does feel thicker than that. This sketch pad, there's 48 sheets, nine by 12. And it's, um, it's very similar to the rice paper, the Hosho paper that we just looked at. So this is the Hosho paper and this is the sketch pad. See, so it's it's very similar except the size is different. Uh, let's see, let's see if we can find some information. Okay, so here it is. The sketch pad. It comes in two sizes. This one's the 6H, the one that we have here. And it also comes in 50 sheets. And this is the other size right there. With 45 GSM. So this one's 70 GSM. And this Hosho paper that we just looked at was 97. That's um, very interesting because I hardly can tell. This is heavier. So when they're talking about the strength, this is um, heavier, this is lighter. And this is the Hosho paper. And this is from the sketch pad paper. So this is heavier than, than this paper. This, this Hosho paper is, which is uh, 97 GSM. And this is, uh, the sketch is 45. And here, I feel like this and like that. Let's read about this sketch paper right here. Japanese papers are made from long fibers, making them strong for art. And this is traditional sumi-e paper. And it's a uh, Hosho paper. So this is Hosho paper too. So both of these are Hosho paper, except um, the difference, the only difference is the GSM. It's typically used for official documents, sketching and painting. So you can use this with the uh, Sumi ink. And they sent me this out too. Uh, I can't, and this is non-toxic. Everything that I received is non-toxic. Um, from them. And if you're having a hard time deciding which one to choose, uh, these are both Hosho paper, they're both rice paper. The sizes are different. The other difference is that um, the GSM, so 97 and 45, and this has uh, more sheets inside. The 12 sheets versus 48 sheets. And this is Hanshi paper. It's nine and a half by 13, and there's 500. Wow. I love that they have on the cover, look, it shows you how to paint 
and paint this. Bamboo is very light. Look at that. And let's do the rip test. Wow, I'm surprised they ripped very straight. And see, both the smooth and the rough. And it's very transparent. I'm gonna try to put it in different angles so you can get to see its textures and this is mold made Japanese rice paper. It's lightweight, thin, and durable. Hanshi paper is traditionally used for lettering and sumi e painting strokes. That's very interesting that it's used for lettering because the paper is so thin. Performs like more expensive art papers. Great for students. It's, yeah, it's funny that it says great, great for students on there because I think I remember using this kind of paper in art class, actually. And there's uh, two, there's uh, one pack of 500 sheets, 100 sheets. They're both 28 GSM and they're both the same size. The only difference is the number of sheets. And I already have a, a, oh my goodness, I already have a bunch of ideas for this. I can't wait to share them with you. I'm actually going to write a note here. I'm going to write a note of my idea so I don't forget. And with their liquid stylist. It's a fine print pen for drawing, sketching, illustrating, writing, and cartooning. It's acid free. And you can also use this um, with water too and paint with it. And we're going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me go ahead and write my note here. Last but not least, we have the, I'm so excited about this one, rice paper. Japanese rice paper are made with the long fibers. And then it's traditionally called cloud dragon. That's beautiful. This paper is known for its floating raw fibers mixed with the paper pulp. Rule paper is decorative as well as strong, both wet and dry. It is usually chosen for covers, collage, book binding, card making, lamp shades, as well as traditional screens. Light passes through this paper with the fiber showing as silhouettes. When viewed in light, the fibers create unique textures and designs. Some modern day painters enjoy Unru paper for its unusual three dimensional results when ink or paint is applied. Because the fibers are so random, no part of the paper roll is identical. A roll makes a large variety of painting sizes possible from square to the traditional long narrow composition. Yeah, so see if this comes in a roll like this. Uh, it's 11 by 60. Again, it's uh, different on both sides. This is a little bit smoother, but it's still rough because of the fibers in there. And look, I hope you can see how beautiful this paper is. The fibers are shiny like silk. There's texture in here. 
I love texture. And you can make this any size you want. Look at that. See the fibers as I'm tearing. Right there. And this is the back side of it. And look at how shiny the fibers are. That's so pretty. And this is the rougher side. 6 MMU. So it's this one right here. Uh, it's 50 GSM. They also have 70, 45, and 45. That's a different size. It's traditional rice paper, rolls, strong, acid-free, absorbent, excellent for calligraphy, sumi-e, and paper crafts. It doesn't shrink or tear easily, making it ideal for woodblock or lime printing, highly absorbent rice paper rolls. Now let's go ahead and just recap what we have. So we have this rice paper roll with the fibers and then they have Hanshi paper. This was the thin paper. And then the sketch pad, rice paper. That was lower GSM than the rice paper pad that we saw. And lastly, for a recap, we have the mineral paper here. That fun mineral paper. And remember, in the beginning of the video, how I was wondering what would happen to this mineral paper if we soaked it. Well, let's take a look because I have it right here and I've soaked it for a little bit. I believe um, maybe 10 minutes. And look at that. Nothing has changed with it. Nothing at all. Texture hasn't changed. The size hasn't changed. It's just wet. That's all. I'm assuming when this will, you know, dry, it'll um, be just the same. And this is the dry one right here. I had a lot of fun looking and and just experimenting with this paper this is not the last of it uh, the next thing is we're going to be uh, testing out some of their things that they sent me we have origami paper this is pure color premium paper delicately textured and fade resistant I love that it's fade resistant. Perfect for origami coloring, collage, and mixed media art techniques. They have uh, a lot of um, different, see, origami paper in their catalog. And I love this catalog because I can see everything at once and I can just, um, 
you know, take a look at it any time I want without having to go online each time. And just um, have everything access and learn more about the items, too. My daughter loves origami. and She makes some pretty cool stuff with origami. Look at all those beautiful colors. They're so neutral and you can combine those. And they'll look great all together. I love this, the, the colors. It's beautiful. And this paper. My daughter uses origami paper all the time. And I never liked that it was such weak paper. Because she would make this beautiful um, stuff with origami. See, she made this butterfly. And it was a little bit different. Um, but she decided um, to make several different butterflies and then she cut its wings so they all look different. And this is uh, not Yasutomo paper. This is just paper um, she bought online. And you see how weak it is. So she makes these beautiful um, things and then they just go to waste um, because the paper, is, paper isn't quality. But Yasutomo paper is pretty awesome. I love the texture of it. See? You can compare there. Look at that texture. And it's much thicker. See the transparency here? You can see through that paper and this one is much thicker. I'm so glad to see uh, quality origami paper. Let me see if I can find the same color as this butterfly. So you can take a look. I think this one is pretty simple. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Look at the texture of the Yasutomo origami paper. It's just so beautiful and the color too. And because it has texture, you get um, this shade. See how beautiful the Yasutomo paper is compared to this other brand that we got online. This is much sturdier. Let's do the rip test. Look at that. When you rip the paper, it doesn't have that white from the inside. It's uh, completely colored, even in the inside of the paper. Because sometimes when you, there are certain papers where you tear it and then it, it's white inside. Whereas this one, the color is the same inside and out. And this lets you make paper collages very nicely where the colors all blend in. I love that. Otter's going to show us how to make origami art with this paper. So that was everything that Yosutemo sent uh, paper-wise. For my other video on their other products, uh, look at my past video. Next time, we're going to go over some of uh, their ink and brushes. So keep a lookout for the next video. Thank you for being here. I enjoy making these videos and testing things out with you. This is super fun. I can't wait to see you in my next video.